to our paint party for this Wednesday evening. I'm Lisa from Lisa's Painting Parties and um, we are going to be doing a great uh, painting tonight for free. So if you can see me, you are where you need to be for our session. This is the painting that we're going to be recreating. Oh, there's a big glare. Ah, that's better. So we're going to be painting this painting right here. It um, is like sunlight, the branches. And this is the one that won our weekly vote. So anyone who follows me has been around the page for a little while. Every Saturday we post, um, I post three um, images that I really like, whether they be photos or paintings or those are pretty much the two options that I have with paintings or photos. And everyone votes on the one they like the best and the one with the most votes by Tuesday at noon. Um, wins uh wins basically and then on wednesday night we paint it all together so this is the winner from this week and i think it was 63 percent of the vote or something so really exciting awesome oh i'm so glad you guys are joining and you guys are commenting yay hi cheryl hi ashley oh i'm so glad you're joining fantastic so yeah so this should be really fun i'm really excited to do this one um remember too so when we're painting it doesn't have to look exactly the same. I'm going to do a similar recreation to this image, um, but you can always change things up if you want to change the colors of things, if you want to make it more, um, you know, supernatural or whatnot, you can. You can do whatever you want with it, but I'll talk you through kind of the elements of wow, this one looks and how I'll go about painting it. And so that's the other caveat for anyone who hasn't joined me before. I have not painted this. This is an image of inspiration that I found online. So this is my first time painting this as well. So as I talk you through it, it's me talking you through how I would, I'm, I'm approaching this painting um, and giving you my tips and tricks of how I would go about recreating it. Um, so if you're joining and you have some tips and tricks and you want to share some things, or if you have things that are not going well, you can definitely share that too in the comments and we can all work together and talk to each other about how to make this a really fun experience. Cool. So this is the image. I also suggest um, if you haven't already, I will have the image available so you can see it as we're painting, but obviously on your screen, it, it's a little bit more annoying, I'm assuming, to you know see the details. So definitely you can grab the screenshot of this image from yesterday's winning post, and you can just have it available as your own reference as we go through it, just in case I either go too quickly or too slowly for how fast or slow you're painting, okay? So it's just easier that way too. So we're going to be doing that. And I'll move the camera angle as well so you can actually see everything properly in just a little bit. But for now, yay. Hi, Patty. Oh, two Patties. Thank you, Patty. And then Patty also from Baltimore. Awesome. Thanks so much for joining. I'm so glad you guys all are. That's fantastic. Um, it's a beautiful day. It's still sunny outside, which is great. I'm so happy with the time change because now it doesn't get dark so early. So it just is wonderful. So I'm very happy about that. Supplies that we'll need for today are a canvas. So I always use a canvas board. This is an 11 by 14. That's what it is. 11 by 14 canvas boards. These boards a lot. Um, they're great quality and they're really easy to um, store since now I have almost 60 paint parties happening and I keep all my canvases. I don't really um, reuse them unless there's a painting like I really dislike. Um, also what you'll need is your painting supplies. So I use acrylic paint um, and if you have the three primary colors, so red, yellow, and blue, and if you have black and white, you can do anything you need with these. So since obviously they're dollar store, I, I always use dollar store paints. I'm pretty cheap when it comes to my paint supplies. I do also have some pre-mixed colors as well, since it's within my budget to get a few of them, <laughs> since they're all like a dollar each. Um, but if you're going for more fancier supplies too, just keep in mind that you can invest and spend a bit more on primary colors and black and white, and then you can go and make everything you want from that too, if you are trying to venture out that route. I'm still in my, my cheap acrylic paint zone. Um, maybe one day. I did recently get some new brushes for my birthday so i'm going to be using those my other brushes were for for almost about like over 20 years ago i've had them so i was very excited so the brushes that we're going to be using um i say you just need a a large a medium and a fine point this one is deceptively fine point it looks kind of 
thick, but it's not. Um, so the sizes of brushes, this is a 10, this is a, a 2 or a 4 you could use, um, and this one's a 4, um, but this one actually creates a very fine point um, when needed. It's like a cat's tongue brush that I recently learned about. Um, and uh, I think this one was about $15, I think, Canadian. So that was like my most expensive brush, which is very exciting, where the other pack of all of these brushes are about 20 bucks. Um, so, um, but it's really nice to get new brushes because they definitely, you can feel the difference in them. So that's cool. You also have paint water. Um, well, just water, I guess, in a container. Make sure it's not the, what you're drinking from. And then also a palette where you can mix everything on. And of course, paper towel. Cool. So that's the supplies that we'll need to do this and I'll talk you through all of this as we go. Um, I'm just keeping an eye on having a little bit of a different setup than my other nights. I'm just trying this out to see how it goes. So hopefully this works out well for you too. Um, and we'll start in a few minutes. I just want to give it a few more minutes before we kick it all off. Um, so before we get into it, I just want to make sure, usually I start around 6.05 just to ensure anyone who wants to join has time to like grab the supplies. So if you're watching this now and you can't pay it along, that's totally fine. This video will be up on my Facebook page under the videos tab, and it will also be up on my YouTube channel, Lisa's Painting Party, so you can watch it whenever you want. I'm not planning to take them down, so they'll just be up there for ever for now, I guess for the time being, until something changes in the future maybe, I don't know. But for now, everything is there. All my previous parties are there as well on both Facebook and YouTube, so if you enjoy this and you want to check out some other ones, definitely do. There's lots of really great paintings we've done over this past year. Um, on that note, I'm coming up to my one year of doing these, which is crazy and so awesome. Um, I'm actually, uh, this page almost has 5,000 followers, which is absolutely unbelievable. So thank you all so much for um, following and liking and enjoying these. Um, they've given me a lot of sense of purpose during this time. Um, this isn't uh, my job. I don't make money from this. Um, I do have, I now have my job back because I was laid off, which is why this all started. Um, so very, very grateful that I've re-sparked my creativity and love of art, and I'm glad, and I hope you, I do the same for you guys too. So thanks so much for, for all of this. Um, so that's really cool. Um, and um, if you are interested in doing any private parties, I'm available for that too. I've done a few of them um, for a couple of different types of organizations before, and they're so much fun. So if you like my style and you would like to um, connect with me about that, whether it's a birthday party, a corporate function, um, any church events, any girl guy things for any ages, um, definitely reach out and let me know. We can talk about that. Um, and what else is there? Oh, yes. And then there's also I set up a buy me a coffee fund. Some people are asking how they could tip. So I just have the link um, as a pinned comment. So if you did want to, again, no pressure. Um, but that would just go towards like my paint supplies and just... Uh, that pretty much um but again no pressure whatsoever um so this really is just most so much fun for me um oh fantastic oh patty's oh the other patty's from california that's fantastic that's great i'm in ontario i'm in uh, ontario canada so i'm just um close to toronto um about half an hour or so away from toronto i grew up in toronto but uh as most cities are these days i could not afford anything in Toronto, so I moved 30 minutes outside of Toronto, luckily, um, only 30 minutes outside of Toronto, because if I was buying a house now, I don't think we could have bought on that, <laughs> sad, sad how pricey everything is, all right, cool, so I'm going to just throw my hair up, and then I'm going to move the camera so we can see everything a little bit more clearly in terms of the canvas. And then I'll start talking through uh, my process of where we're going to start um, and then the reasons why and um, all of that good stuff. All right. OK, cool. So let's do that. So let's see if, any, if you have any other comments, again, feel free to put them in there and I'll keep an eye on them as well. I'm going to see. I'm going to do this. And then let's see if I can move it a little bit closer to. I'll have to physically do it because there's no zooming in function because that would just be too easy. Okay. Getting a very odd glare, so. Oh, yeah, you can see like a whole room behind it. That's really annoying. So, yeah, I strongly suggest, since I'm getting this bad glare on here, if possible, I don't know if I can do it without getting the glare. Okay, like that's probably the best. If you want to take a screenshot like right now, so you have that, go for it. Otherwise, grab this picture from the post from yesterday, and then you can then um, 
which would be advised because even the color looks kind of weird when I'm looking at the screen there. I wouldn't really go for that too much. All right, cool. Okay, because I, I think it's going to end up having a weird glare from the way this is set up, and I'm not sure how to correct that in the moment. Okay, so um, where we're going to start with this. So we look at this painting. So anyone who is new to painting, um, what we're going to do is, especially with acrylics, we're going to start with anything that's furthest back. So whatever is in the background, which is ultimately in this picture of the sky. So we're going to start right with this really, really fun sky. We're going to get some nice blues going. So on your palette, you can squirt a nice glob of blue and white, and you can put a little bit of yellow too. So we can start with that. And when, I'll, when I put the paint on my palette too, I'll show you like about how much I'm, I'm putting on. I always go a little bit less um, when I'm putting the paint on my palette because acrylic paint can dry pretty quickly. So I'd rather just keep adding more paint to it than get the paint to be dried out and then the consistency and the quality ends up being really annoying. So that's what I'll do. So, put, so I'll start off with that blue sky and we're going to pretty much cover the entire canvas. Um, I would suggest, you don't technically have to because we do obviously have the tree that's going to be um, at, in the main ground covering a lot of space on this canvas, but we do want the sky to be poking through a little bit. So I would suggest, and the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to do a full on, the whole canvas will be covered in this blue circular sky with that um, sunshine in the middle. So that's what I'm going to start with. And don't worry about like all the sun streaks. That will be after we get this nice round orb sky happening. Hey, Jody! I'm so glad you're joining. Yay. Okay, perfect. So yeah, so again, my apologies. There was a weird glare. <laughs> And then I just see, like, the rest of my room in a weird <laughs> mirror there. That's kind of weird. Anyway. Okay. Things I can control. And right now I could control that, but not in a quick enough way. So we're going to just deal with it. All right. So the blue that I have today, and, um, again, it's my dollar store paint. This one is a Copenhagen blue. This blue is definitely a little... Not as, a, not as bright as some other blues, so my painting will look different than this inspiration image, and that's okay. So I'm putting a pretty good glob of blue on there. And then let's get some white, too. There we go. Okay, and we got a nice little bit of white like that. And then we also got some, put a bit of, oh, whoa. My paint likes to dry and how to be flaky. That is not helpful. I'm going to put a little bit of yellow on there. So in terms of amounts, that's kind of what I'm looking at. It is already spreading out quite a bit, but that's what I'm looking at there. And yes, my palette is always dirty. It will always be dirty. Because for some reason, I really like that. And I know that's kind of weird, but that's how, that, that's what I do. Okay, so where shall we start? Why don't we start right smack dab where we want that sun to go so you can decide again where you want that to be i'm going to try to stay true to the picture so the sun is located about center of the canvas just above so the center line is about here so it's center if you look at it in terms of um horizontal no portrait <laughs> right so it's centered here but it actually is just a bit higher um than the midway so we were looking if we're looking at the canvas we'll split it up about like there right so the sun's going to sit about here, okay? And there's no right or wrong way to do it and how or how big it's going to be. Um, yeah, it's going to be lots of fun. Oh, hey, Bonnie, I'm so glad you're joining. Yay! And you're doing it in watercolors. That's going to look so, so great. I definitely encourage anyone who already is comfortable with painting or wants to try different styles, like, go for it and check it out. Bonnie's work is beautiful, and she does her own paint parties as well, so definitely check her out. She's fantastic. Awesome. Oh, Mary, I'm so happy to hear that. Mary says that she, um, the past year, brought out her creative side and brought out main wonders, wonders to her mental health. That's amazing. That's so good. I to I'm totally with you, Mary. Without it, honestly, I, yeah, I would have <laughs> gone a little crazy. When I lost my job, um, well, we got put on temporary, temporary leave last year, um, and I didn't realize how much I associated my personality to my job. Like, I really identified, like, that's who I was. So that was a little bit of a you know, moment in time. <laughs> oh no, I just dipped in the wrong color. I started talking about myself personally and I'm already like making some messes. Oh dear. Okay. 
No, we are starting with the sun in the middle. Let's start it off. Okay, let's go. I'm going to start with white, and then I'm going to go with some yellow. So I'm putting just a big glob of white, and it's not going to look like anything, and you're probably not even going to know what I'm doing right at the bottom. But we're going to start off and put a white glob kind of to start off where I want my sun to live. So he's going to live here. No one can see the white, but we all know it's secretly here. And this is going to help us when we start putting our yellow in and start making it nice and bright. So now I'm going to go with my yellow. And this is the fun part because now you're like, where did my yellow, my white sun go? It's okay. Just going to kind of go around it. And the white's going to keep it a little bit lighter in the middle and it will allow us to blend it out a little bit and start a nice orb. Okay, so let's just have this nice orb happening here. Okay, and my canvas is completely dry besides the paint that I'm putting on right now. So we are going to be mixing and painting as we go. So I'm adding a little bit of white now just to the sides just to just to make it a little softer but blend it out a little bit more. And I think I want it I do want it to be a bit brighter in the middle. So I know I had white initially, but you know what? I am actually going to go full yellow. And then maybe add a little bit of white after to make it look super hot white. But right now we're just going to go with this yellow orb. Okay. Hi, Lisa from Kansas. Awesome. I'm so glad you're joining. Love that there's so many Americans joining me. That's so fantastic. It's also crazy to think about how many, how many more people live in the States than in Canada. It always blows my mind. Anyways. Um, okay, cool. <laughs> I think about weird things, so I might start talking about weird things. <laughs> All right, cool. So what I want to do now is I want to start getting into my blue, but if we put blue into our yellow, we are going to get a green and I don't want green on here so far. So because I've done this very thin, not too much paint, it's going to dry fairly quickly and that's good. What I'm going to start to do is I'm going to get white, which I kind of did already, I guess a little bit, and I'm going to paint white on the exterior of my orb. Because the, when we start with the with the blues, the blue is going to be the lightest. It's going to be a nice light blue in that area. And then it's going to progressively get darker as we move to the corners of our canvas, right? So I'm just going to start off by getting this, getting white here. And my orb is already pretty darn dry, which is great. Okay. Hi, Nancy from Pennsylvania. Awesome. Every time I think of Pennsylvania, I think of the Hershey's Chocolate Factory. So as a kid, I read about the Hershey's Chocolate Factory in Pennsylvania. And I remember thinking, I want to go there so badly. And then looking it up on a map and being like, oh, that's not, that's not so far away from me. <laughs> Never went there, though. But that was like a goal. All right. So now I want to start going in and start putting a little bit of blue. No, sorry. I'm still going to go with a bit more white. I'm, I'm not ready for my blue yet. Okay, let's keep putting another bit more white. So basically I'm going to mix kind of a light blue on my canvas is what I'm doing. So I'm putting another even bigger orb of white around my existing yellow orb. And now I'm going to touch my brush in my blue and I'm going to start putting a little bit of blue here and as I do that it's going to mix with the white that I have and it's going to make this blue very light okay and I'm going to get more white now and I'm going to go right on top of that blue that I just did I don't know if I mentioned it already, but I'm using my big old paintbrush for this section because I'm going to do nice lots of coverage. I'm using my largest brush to do this part. Okay, so I'm going to start with that light. Okay, and I'm going to continue with my white. I'm going to keep, let's make another little orb around this circle. I'm working fairly 
quickly now because I want to keep my paint wet as I continue to blend out. Okay, so again, I'm going to put blue in here. Okay. Try and keep it circular. Circle of vibes going on. Okay, I'm going to get some more blue. Come around, this time just using like pure blue. blue circle, kind of a messy circle, and guess what, we're going to get the white, and we're going to go over it, and we're going to start mixing, we're going to get white again, let's go over there, and then just start mixing, and as we do that, we're blending it into the lighter blue, and getting a nice Nice mix happening here. Awesome. I already need like way more white. I greatly underestimated how much white that I needed. I do want this to be lighter. Keep going with this. I'm putting some white on top of it. Okay, and I'm going to go in again and get some more blue. Right on the top and the bottom. I absolutely I do this so many times. I just splattered some paint on my canvas. So if you end up doing this too, I will show you how to correct that. I won't do that right yet, but I will show you in a moment or two. It happens to me a lot. I get too into my my painting and then I make silly mistakes like that. So I'm just going to keep putting, just putting some, I'm noticing on the canvas there's some areas where I can see um, the actual canvas board still sticking through it and I don't like that so I tend to try to cover that so I don't like to see the texture of the, the canvas. This is not really necessary for me to paint this corner because it's going to be covered but again I still think it's better just in case we want sky to poke through the branches. So there's not like a weird white spot of canvas happening afterwards. We don't want to deal with that later. So let's just deal with it now. So I'm just kidding. Exactly, Bonnie. Happy little accidents. That's all. That's what those little splatters are. This makes your painting more original. <laughs> I meant to do that. It's a painting technique. Can't you see how it adds? Texture. <laughs> I probably can rationalize it somehow. Okay, so again, I'm gonna get down here, make this darker, keep this Copenhagen blue in its entirety. Ooh, my finger's gonna go in wet paint, whether I like it or not. Yep. Oh, it's not that I dislike it either. Okay. And again, I know a lot of this, again, will be covered, but I'm still going to get this going here. There's been so many birds lately. It's so nice. So happy that spring is, like, 
finally here. But apparently I heard that, of course, on April 1st, on April Fool's Day, no less, we're apparently we're expecting some snow here in Ajax, in Ontario. What the heck, man? I'm hoping that's going to be moved along, but at the same time, I guess it kind of makes sense. <laughs> it's going to happen. It's going to happen on, like, April Fool's Day. It's like, ah, you thought it was nice. It's not now. Cool job. All right, let's get rid of this. Let's say bye-bye. So I'll just put some white paint on top of it. My brush is still covered in lots and lots and lots of blue. Okay. There we go. So I blended that out fairly well enough. Awesome. Okay. So what we can do now, so now that I have a nice coverage going on, um, I like it quite a bit. I, I really like to see a lot of the paint strokes to really make it feel very painterly. So whenever I do a sky like this, I like to go back and then to add some more like specific strokes of each color to kind of make it pop, essentially. I don't know, I, hopefully that made some sort of sense. Um, and also it just makes it a bit more um, opaque on the canvas so then I can't really see the actual canvas behind it and it makes it just come out a bit more. The other thing I'm going to do as well is I am going to add a bit more white to this to blend it, um, but I need to clean my brush first. We definitely don't want, again, it to be like a kind of a weird, like, green sun. And we want the green and the branches and stuff to really stand out nicely. So I'm just going to, I think I'm going to do that first, and then I'm going to go back over and put in some more specific line work. I mean, you can kind of see that there's some nice paint strokes happening, but I'm going to play with it a little bit more, especially in this area where I know it's going to be um, more visible. Okay, so just clean off my brush. I again need more white paint. I'm using a lot of white paint. Okay, so let's go back in my white and I want to just put a little border of white here. I'm going to get some of my yellow, and then I just want to add some yellow in. Okay. And I do want it to be a bit more like white hot in the center, so I'm going to put a bit of white in the middle, kind of where I did before. And then just bring this yellow around. Definitely made my son much bigger than the one in the picture, but that's that's the way it's going to be. Okay, so I'm going to do that. So I like that more, and now I'm going to go in and I'm going to just put in almost like another layer of what I did with the blue and the white um, to give some more streaks, because I want it to be just a bit more, like I said, opaque, and just have a bit more strokes happening on the actual painting. So where do I want to start? I think I'm going to go outside in this time. So I'm going to stay darker on the edges. Actually here is still pretty wet. It's not going to do it for me. white I 
and just kind of have little like strokes around. Go back here. This one with blue, and I'm just putting a bit more of the blue little sweeps back in. Basically, you can just play with this until you are happy with the way it looks. I'm going to put more little circular strokes to get this emphasis of this blaring, bright, beautiful sun. Feel free. If you want to, if you feel like you're kind of done with it, that's fine too. You can kind of just stop and let it just sit for a little bit. You can always, a good practice too is to kind of like, like look at your painting a little bit away from where you're sitting, so like hold it a little bit away from you, just so you can see it kind of a big picture of how things are looking to make sure you're digging it. There is a little bit of kind of a green kind of vibe to that. I don't know. Let's try. I'm going to put a bit of yellow and see what happens. I don't know. I might not like it. I'll do it, and if you don't like it, then you can then you don't have to follow along. <laughs> There's a little bit of a green tinge, I guess, in this area. I'm going to add a little bit of yellow and see if I like that. You know what? I don't mind it. Okay. All right, so I think I'm pretty happy with these like circular strokes that I have going on. Just gonna rinse out my brush a bit. Perfect. Okay. All right. So now what I'm like, what we're gonna do is. I want to put in, so as you see with the sun, now you have all these beautiful rays that are coming down. So a few things we're going to look at. So the rays are the same kind of color that we have here going on. So they're more of like a white and they're a bit of like a yellow as well. So kind of like a really light yellow. Um, so how I'm going to play with this is actually still using this big brush because I'm getting a pretty nice thin line out of it. So I said tailor it depending on the brush that's giving you more control of the line. If you like the way that strokes are going, if you if you enjoy the way your strokes are happening here and you're getting some nice like thin lines, I would suggest continuing to use it. Otherwise, you may want to switch to a thinner brush. Up to you. Um, I'm going to stick with this one for now. Okay, so I'm going to get white on here, so a nice amount, but it's like my brush is pretty thin, right? And I'm just going to start and just kind of put little, woo whoopsie, it's still wet, so I made it a little bit white here, which we don't want to do. Just watch, watch for paint that's still wet, so I might have to keep dipping each time, because my blue paint is still a little wet, and I don't want that to come, so I'm just going to put a few... Strokes. Okay. 
Hmm. I'm just going to keep kind of pulling little white lines from in here. It's kind of coming from there. Again, we're going to have a lot of trees happening, so it's going to dull out this feeling in a little bit. But then I'm also going to get some yellow on my brush now, and I'm going to go over kind of in the same areas that I just did my white streaks, just to, again, give that sun <laughs> like feel to it. I'm going to try not to stress when I bring the, the blue into there, because I keep forgetting. Every time I do it, I, I stress out a little bit, and then I think, okay, wait, no, we're going to have a bunch of branches and and greenery happening so it, it won't be as much of a problem as I am thinking in my head it is <laughs> cool okay so I just kind of give this effect of like the the sun rays kind of coming through maybe some of them are a little bit out that's fine there we go I like the contrast too of all these like swirls kind of coming out and now we have this like emanating beam. I love it. A beam, I guess beams. So pretty. Okay, cool. All right. All right. Next up is what? So I'm gonna just with my dry brush. Okay, I lied. Start with my dry brush, but then I'm going to go back and get a little bit of white paint on it. I'm just going to blend this in a little bit. And then with a little bit of white paint on a very dry brush, I'm just going to now pull out a little bit more. Just to kind of make it, instead of it being like so specifically straight lines, now I'm just going to kind of mess them up a little bit. So there's a bit more of like a sun stream almost happening. So it kind of gives it more of a hazier effect on it. So very dry, you put a little bit of paint and then you just kind of pull it and almost immediately there's like no paint on your brush. But then it's starting to get a bit more of a, I don't know if you can see it, I'm going to bring it a little closer. A little blading is much darker. Okay. So here, so you see how there, then you see the paint, so it kind of just has more of a, like it messes it up a little bit and it looks more like the sun beams that we see kind of coming through a window or something, you know? Cool. So I'm pretty happy with that. I think I'm going to keep this one as is. But again, you can keep playing with it however you desire. And then we will go on to the next part. So the next step after doing the background. So the next thing that's furthest in the background would be all the leaves right um, now I will be painting the leaves predominantly first but I want to plot in where I want my tree to live before I start putting in all the leaves and all the, the stuff going on so I am going to put the actual tree first but then we're gonna do the leaves before we actually like finalize our tree if that makes sense Okay, cool. So with the tree, um, if you have a pre-mixed brown, go for that. Um, or you can mix um, red and things blue and orange. So first you got you mix yellow and red together, equal parts to get an orange. And then if you mix that orange color with your blue, then you will get a brown. Um, again, depending on what you're using, if you're using dollar store paints like I am, and you're using ones like Copenhagen Blue and Daffodil Yellow and so forth, the annoying thing about these is that when you mix the colors together, they already have kind of a mix in them. 
So you might need to, it's not just a straight up as saying equal parts of one and the other because your bright red might already have more of a white tint in it or something else in it that's going to affect its ability to mix into the brown you want. So you might have to play with it a little bit if you don't already have one. Alternately, you could always use black right off the hop if you would rather just be like, you know what, I don't have, I don't want to mix a color, and I don't have a brown, and I'd rather just go black. That's totally fine too. Um, or you could even do like a very dark uh, blue or very dark, like a, a dark purple even will look kind of cool. Um, and then we can always like play with that as well. Okay, so now let's plot in where we want our tree to live. So I think I'm going to use my medium brush to decide that okay and I have my brown paint and this isn't going to be the color of my tree fully this is just for me to ooh, put some water on my computer okay this is just for me to have a guide as to where I want all the all everything to live okay so this tree when I paint it I'm just going to draw a line where I want the middle of my tree to be Okay, so my tree is going to live outside of that line. So this is where it's going to kind of come up and come that way. Okay. So this is just like the middle of where I want this tree to live. I'm just making it a little thicker so you can see it a bit clearer. Okay, and then let's see. So this is one of the branches that are going to come up this way. And then we're going to have another one that comes like this way. And we're going to have a nice big old one that comes this way. Okay. And we have one that comes uh, this way. Okay, another one's gonna come and come out and go down. Okay, now with these ones, these lines, I'm going to play a little bit with because I want to think about where I want, I want to frame the sun, but it's gonna go in front of it and then we're, ooh, ooh that's not good. Some dry paint on that. And again, these aren't the last branches that we're going to see. We're going to put in a bunch of green, and that's going to make, we're going to have to still draw a bunch of branches on top of that. But, um, so that one's that one there, that one there, another one that kind of comes out. But I want you to think about where the branches are going to be located so that when we put in all of our leaves, they make sense. Okay? So this is pretty much where the tree is. So we're going to have... A lot of green happening but we're not really going to see specific branches It'd be all full of green all in here and then as we come out here we're going to start to put some green happening but these are the ones you really want to think about how we want those branches to go because we want them to come all the way down right so if it's helpful like you can literally put in like all of the little ways it's going to move just know that we're going to be putting a bunch of greenery on top of this. So don't stress about how perfect or not perfect your lines are, how thick or not thick, because this isn't really the point of this part of it, right? We're just going to put it in so we know where we want to put in our, our leaves, our foliage. Funny word, foliage. Okay. That one. Okay, so I think that for me works as a guide of where I want that to be. Okay, now this might be confusing to some people, especially if anyone's just jumping on, being like, well, that's not your full tree, and it's absolutely not. I'm still going to be putting a big old trunk happening here, but I'm not doing that right now. I just want to give me a guide so I can play with all my green. Okay? Okay, so now that I have an idea of where I want all the green to go. Now we need to have a couple of different greens to play with. So you'll see that there's like a yellow green 
um, there's kind of a medium green and there's a bit of a dark green to give some shadow, right? Where like the ends kind of hit um, where they're growing from the branches, right? So we want to have a couple of different variations of green. What we can start with, I think, doesn't really matter to be honest, but I think I want to start with maybe my like my yellow green because I want to play with some of this up here. So I'm going to do that first. So again, if you have a pre, if you have a bunch of premix greens and different colors, go nuts, have fun with that, of course. Um, but if you want, you can always mix again your blue and your yellow together. You can start off. Um, if you want it to be more of a yellow green, you want to put more yellow than blue. So you can do like three parts yellow, one part blue to start, um, just to see how it's mixing, um, and then go from there. So let's do that. So I put a little bit of yellow. I definitely need more than that. I do also have a pre-mixed green that I might tap into. We'll see. I'm going to see what I can do with mixing these colors first, and then we'll decide if we like it or not. So let's put blue now let's mix it into my yellow let's see what i think uh, i thought i was showing you but clearly i am not okay there we go you can't even really see it that well okay well there we go we have kind of like a green happening okay i'm gonna put a little bit more yellow into it Okay, so I'm just using one of my brushes, and I want to start playing in with all of these green foliage that's happening here. Okay, so I'm just going to start by dabbing it around. It's very yellow, I find, but that's okay. I'm getting, and it's, we're going to be putting all these branches on top of it, right? So I'm just going to start by... This is all of the this color in here. It's all very yellow to me. I'm going to put a little bit more yeah, blue in here. Okay, we'll stick with that for now and then we'll play with that. Okay. I'm just going to keep putting in a bit more in here. Just fill in this area. So it's all one color right now. We're going to add a bit more. If we make it thin enough, then we it will dry a little bit faster, and then we can kind of put things on top of it just to make it look more full of different greens and whatnot. If you have a sponge too, this sponge would make a really nice technique here too. And you don't have to be perfect in covering all the background because maybe some of the blue might be sticking out. Okay, so let's just go here too. Continue with this light one. And this part, when you're doing it, it's not going to look very fulfilling because it's not 
we only have still like the one color. You may have a two again a little bit, which you may see a little bit of me doing that because I'm mixing my green as I'm going. So some of them might be a little bit more blue and a little bit more yellow as I'm doing it. But really it's kind of like we're just getting the first layer of this filler in. And we're not going to stress too much about how good <laughs> it looks at the moment. We're going to be adding to it in a little bit and then we'll make it look a lot nicer in a little bit. Okay. Okay. If you have, if you want to make it a little bit darker as you're going, then you can kind of pop in on the areas that you want. You can put in a little bit of darker shade of the color. I think I'm just going to be dabbing it in. When we put the tree in and all the branches, this part is going to look really nice and it's going to pop. So right now, let's just get all of the leaves kind of in this background section. And I'm just using a bit of a darker green to get it in there. Give it a bit of a different, I'm going to go back to the yellow a little bit and just add a little bit more yellow. And kind of play with this back and forth. some spots with the yellow touch it touch it a little bit here and there when we did our elephant a few weeks ago you do the first couple layers and it just looks very very strange and then as you keep building on it that's when you really get more depth and it looks a lot nicer and then when you put the final touches when you actually get all the branches on top that's when it's all going to just boom and come together okay so some of these now so how are we going to approach this well we have and similarly we have some leaves kind of come out so let's follow kind of where the branches live right and put the leaves accordingly Dabba dabba. Okay, just kind of grow them out however you desire. Know that we're going to still put a bunch of little branches on top to show where the growth is. So if you end up randomly putting like something like here, for example, and there's no branch, you can always then put a branch in there later. So don't worry about that. The branches that we've put in initially are just to give us a guide of where we want some of this to live. Okay. So I just do like little bunches in different spots and just leave some gaps where you can see the background pop out. Okay.
And right now, again, I'm just using the same tone of green right now. And then I'm going to add in some lighter elements, maybe some darker ones too, just to get it a bit better. There's definitely some more green happening behind here. Looking very pretty. Okay, let's make it some yellow. Make it a bit more yellowy. Okay, so with the yellow, I'm just going to dab in some spots. So not all over the same areas, but we're just going to put a little bit of dabby dabs. in some areas where these leaves are a little bit lighter. And lighter because the sun is kind of shining on them and they're at the tips, right? And so the ones a bit closer, just gonna make it a little bit darker as well. bit of a darker green happening so closer to where the branches are happening we're gonna have another value so the green's gonna come out here a little bit it's a bit darker closer to where the branches live So now we have a couple different tones happening, which is nice. I'm just going to go, I just want to make my green a little bit lighter. I'm going to put a little bit of white in my green. I just wanted it a little bit lighter, but I need to put some more yellow into it because I don't want it to be just adding another bit of another tone. So I feel like some of the yellow I put in was just a bit too too yellow <laughs> and I wanted it to be a little bit okay so just kind of play with that a little bit okay and then feel free to play with that until you're happy with it and then you can even go back and grab your initial medium green and then just put some of that back into it it's all about like layering it and playing with the color you're not trying to make it exactly like this original image. You're making your own. So you want it to feel like your own style, your own painting. So you might want to change things up on it, which is highly encouraged. So you don't need to put like a certain branch exactly where this original artist had put their branch. You can change things up. You can make things a little bit lighter, a little bit darker. You can change the colors entirely. So don't feel confined by it at all. The great thing about acrylic paint is that once it dries, it's really easy to paint right over if you want to fix things up too. So that's a really great thing about it. So don't feel worried about trying something kind of funky and different. It's very, uh, it's a great medium for that. It can be, again, it can be a little bit annoying sometimes. Trying to get some more values happening over here too. Okay. okay, that's very nice. I think I'm pretty happy with that. I like that a lot. I do think I need to go a little bit darker, closer to where the branches meet. I might need to dip into my black paint just to get it slightly darker. I don't know. So black paint is always a little scary because it does take over quite a bit. I'm actually going to try brown first. I'm going to mix some the brown I made. No, I don't think it's dark enough. No, let's go black. Okay. A little bit of black into my green just to make a very dark, very, very dark green. I'm just going to add a little bit right in the middle. Try to just A 
little bit of dark shadowy a little bit in there. I feel like it looks strange with the shadowy. But again, I have to remember that I haven't put in all the other elements yet. So we gotta keep that in mind. Okay. So where else do we need to put in? Well, we have some lovely foliage happening here. So again, let's start with like my medium green. Okay, dokie dokie. Okay, so let's just put in some little smatterings. I'm taking my brush and I'm just like dabbing, dabbing, and just kind of coming down a little bit sometimes. And other times just coming, staying close to where my line is. But again, remembering that this is going to actually be a little bit thicker than what I have. So I'm not going to go all the way because my, my the trunk's actually going to be a lot thicker than that. So I'm going to just bring this down. I'm kind of just going and just moving my brush, putting like little dots of green color. like the vibe of a bunch of leaves okay okay and then I'm gonna go a little bit lighter so I'm gonna get some yellow going make it a little bit lighter and then I'm gonna do the same thing in here so I'm gonna it's on the other I'm just gonna put a little bit of the same dotty dot dots on top of this area, just do some more little dotty dot dots. Okay, I'm putting some yellow in there too, and a little bit of yellow in certain spots. Do good, and I want to get my darker green that I kind of made. Just put a little bit. Couple little areas just to give it a little bit of interest. Okay, I want to go back to my medium green and just touch up some spots again. It's like a nice kind of texture there. Cool. So I think I'm pretty happy with that for now. Again, we can always play with that a little bit more if you want to. Oh, thank you for replying to Carolyn Ashley. I really appreciate it. That's really awesome. I also see I, I spy a little bit of green back here, but I'm not going to worry about that right yet. I think I am going to start to build in my actual trunk and all of the branches. And then if I decide I want to put some more greenery in the back, I'll play with that a little bit later. Okay, I think I need a little bit more coffee. Oh. Hmm. It's still very tasty, so. <laughs> I'm okay. <laughs> All right. So I do want this. I do need more blocks. I do want it to be a pretty dark trunk happening. I'm kind of debating whether I want to go. No, I don't want to go full black. I want to go like a very dark brown. So let's do that. Hi, Joe. I love that you always stop in and say hi. So sweet. Okay, so I'm going to mix a little bit of black into my brown just to get a very dark brown.
brown and that's what I want to start my tree with okay um so how shall we how shall we play okay we want to play with this I'm gonna start here I think okay I want that to come out more I want that to come out like this and then we're gonna have I love how this tree has all of these like swooshes and grooves. So cool. Let's start to kind of give this tree this character. Okay, and then pull it up like this. I'll put some loopy dupes. Okay. That's the oh line I want. Oh, I don't want to do that. Okay, let's just... Okay, so I'm just going to fill this in. And then I'll put in some details with it afterwards. Just want to get a nice background happening here with this tree. Very thick. I'm gonna make my tree a little bit too thick. <laughs> oh well. We'll see. upwards <laughs> I think my tree looks really weird <laughs> all right I need a little bit more paint this is gonna take a lot again I have to remember that it's not done yet but right now I think it looks very strange it's all good we'll fix it up okay so up here oh thank you Joe that's very sweet okay okay so build in some of these branches okay Oh, 
I think I need to bring out my trunk a little bit more at the bottom. I think that's the issue. It's looking a little bit weird because of that. I think it needs to go more like to here. Yeah, I think that does make it look a little better. Okay, cool. All right, now let's play with the rest of these. Okay, so there's also a big old one here. So I'm following kind of similar to the way these um, branches are in our inspiration painting. But again, you can change up your branches however you desire. Too, actually maybe we need to put green in there too let's kind of do that afterwards okay so Keep building the base of this tree before we put in some nice details on this trunk. The branches. As you're doing this, now I'm noticing a few things. Obviously, I need some greenery happening back here because it doesn't make sense why there's all this greenery here and there's nothing here. So I'm going to have to go back and fix that up. So I'm not going to worry about my lines too much. So I'm going to have to go back and, and, and redo them a bit. So but I'm going to make this a little thicker. So when you're doing all of these branches, remember that they're always thicker when they are closer to the base. And as they go further away, they get thinner. Just keep that in mind and try to do that as much as possible. And if you do that, your tree will look a lot more realistic. And if the tree isn't looking very realistic, I would bet that that's, that is one of the issues. It tends to happen frequently. I know when I, that's usually my problem. Like if my tree looks kind of funky, it's because I've messed up where how like how thick the branches are so it's definitely like way too thick away from the source you know just want to be cautious of that i'm gonna keep putting in some of my thicker branches with this brush and then i'm gonna go down to um a thinner one oh sorry joe i didn't realize you i didn't see all the messages there my my apologies you're going to start over again. Yeah, that is totally, that makes complete. That's, I've done that before many times. <laughs> no, I'm not outside, but I have a, a window open and there's a giant tree. And um, there are a lot of birds. A lot, a lot of birds, which is really nice. Um, so I'm very happy about that. They wake us up in the morning. Sometimes that can get a little annoying. But honestly, in the last week has been fan-freaking-tastic. And they're still going and it's like it's not it's like late here so you know it's like seven it's like seven at night right now so 
They're still going. Which I really like. Okay, so I'm going to put in this branch here. Where do I want to go? It's going to come to the here. It's going to come down. Like that. Yes, yes. And then it's also attached to this one here. Okay, I'll keep that going. And that's going to be thicker. That's going to even come like this, I think. Why, yes it is. that are going on in the tree. Well, that's going to be so much fun to do in a little bit. Okay, let's just keep going with it. Okay. There we go. I want this to be a little thicker. Two bits, so I need to go a bit more thicker there, too. Like that. Okay. I want to do some of the other branches, but I have to keep reminding myself that I should probably get a thinner brush before I go that route. We'll see. I might still end up using this one, but not yet. Okay, so let's go with this one here. That's great. I yeah, I agree, Ashley. That's a really good point. Everyone does have their own style. So just because it doesn't look like this or like our inspiration or like what you might think in your head it should look like, you're right. It can be still yours. You can still, still be proud of it and still have fun with that. That one looks neat. I like that branch a lot. Okay. And this one, we need this one to come out too. So I'm just going to go behind it. So I'm trying to remember too that some of the branches, like even when I'm drawing them, they should, they don't have to be like super straight lines. In fact, they should kind of have little bends in them, little ridges. That does make it look more realistic. Oh, that's nice. Cool. I love trees so much. I love whenever we paint trees. So fun. Okay, so now okay, 
I think I should be switching to a thinner brush before I venture into these parts. I'm going to still go on this side a little bit more. I should probably change my brush. Okay, let's just put some paint here. Okay. Yeah, okay. Let me switch to a Very, it's a very good point Ashley makes. We are our own worst critic, right? Like when you're ever you're doing anything, but especially when you're doing creative things. I, I just saw something too recently that was like, remember when you're a kid and like you would just draw or you would just paint or you do whatever it was, and you were pretty darn happy with what you did because you were like, I'm proud. This is pretty kick ass. Like I really love it. And then somewhere along the line, we lose that. Like we end up. I guess comparing it or someone saying something about someone else's work and we think that we're not as good and then we just kind of lose that. And that's really sad because, again, everyone has their own style and their own enjoyment. And art is really, um, I don't know, just really soothing. It makes me feel very calm and happy and I feel very, like, satisfied when I'm done with it. It keeps you in the moment as well. There's so many benefits to it. So, yeah, it's definitely important not to let it get you down if it's not exactly what you think, you know. Oh, perfect. That's great. Ashley says, I hate the fine details. I think mine is done. <laughs> I get that. It's a pleasure. Yeah, of course. Thank you so much, Ashley. Definitely share with me. I love to see it. Yeah. So for me, I, I really love the fine details. <laughs> I'm going to get really into like putting all these little lines in, but I totally get it. If that's not your vibe. Thank you so much for joining. And Bonnie's put her link for her paint party. Um, she has a free class tomorrow. So definitely um, if anyone's interested, check her out. She has um, some great original concepts and designs. Awesome. Okay. I feel like every time I dig my brush, it's not getting wet. Okay. There we go. Okay. Let's get some thinner lines going here. Shall we? Okay. So I'm using my thinner brush. I don't want to play with this a bit. There we go. I might even go a little bit darker. I want it to be a little bit darker than that brown. Okay, I need this one too. I'm just going to add little thinner branches that kind of come out that are supporting all of these leaves. Okay, I'm just going to play with that a little bit more as we go. I'm 
Mm. Sorry, when I'm doing details, I tend to get really quiet. <laughs> the yes, Michelle, you're not going crazy. You do, in fact, hear birds. There are tons of birds outside my window. Even though it is seven o'clock, there's like a nest and they're still chirping quite a bit, which is pretty cool. And yes, absolutely. Um, Christina, you can watch it on YouTube. Uh, Lisa's Painting Parties is my channel and all of my videos are there. So if you dig this, I strongly suggest you check out some other videos because there are some really, really fun previous parties we've done before and you'll I think you'll probably like it it's all free on there don't go away I need you Continuing to put in some more of these thin branches. So I'm trying to start a bit thicker and then I I'm lifting I'm trying to release the pressure on my brush as it gets closer to the edge. I'm also trying to I tend to paint very similar lines. Um, I think a lot of us get into that kind of flow. So I'm trying to consciously change some of them so that they kind of bend upwards or they're, they're a bit more crooked um you know to kind of give it more of a natural vibe but i do struggle with that so you will see that quite a bit <laughs> you are um a hundred percent right bonnie so i've tried many times to play music to do different types of background stuff and the thing is if you play music you need to have the copyright the rights to them basically or else you can't play the music and that has pretty much happened where i play different things and then when i post my video to youtube um, it gets flagged um, because i think when you do an actual live you can play whatever you want but then you can't record it and have people watch it in future um, because then that's when you need to pay whoever owns the copyright rights, essentially. And so I'm usually stuck, or I've been stuck in past, we're just not playing anything. Because what happens is when it's in a video, then they end up either editing the video, so I have to then cut out that section that has the, um, copywritten items. Which is very annoying, because then it cuts out what my instruction is, or what's happening. Um, and the few times, actually, the last few times, I actually was uh, doing a video editor software, and, which came with, my, from my understanding, music that was, like, free to use. And wouldn't you know it, it got flagged. <laughs> I was like, what? Yeah, so, very, very annoying. But because I like to have my videos up for you to watch later, if you so desire, I get stuck with not having the most 
um, inter most fun music, I guess. But you're right, this actually has been quite nice. Uh, the, the nature sounds are kind of working. Last week I found um, a channel on YouTube that had um, just have nature sounds and it seems to be fine. So it looks like nature sounds work, even if they're from another channel. I guess you can't copyright that, I suppose. Not yet, anyways. Who knows? Okay, so I'm just going to play with these branches. Oh, that's nice, Joe. I think that would look really nice with a quote on it. That'd be beautiful. Absolutely. And yeah, actually, they just mute it out. It's very uh, <clears throat> annoying. On YouTube, they, they like flag it and then they ask me what I want to do with it. They're like, oh, do you want to do you want to mute it or do you want to cut the video out? And I'm like, oh, OK. So there's some videos on there that will go mute for a little bit because I still said, OK, well, I think that's still better than cutting out it entirely. But Sometimes I do just stop talking, so I felt like, well, I guess that's not too bad. It's like when I get into a certain section and I get silent. <laughs> okay. Another one that goes in the back here. Just you can kind of just keep playing with it until you have the branches that you like on top of all the greenery that you've already made from before. I think I'm almost there. And I do want to play with the details on this trunk as well, so. Okay, I want to do that there too. So here, you want to fix this line up a little bit. There we go. Okay, cool. Still very light in here. Okay, so I think I want to put some green background in here. Maybe a little bit here and here. Like I'm going to touch up a little bit of the green before I do all my detail in my trunk. But that's where I'm pretty much at. So if you already have added all the green that you need, um, then you should be all good to start doing all the detailing in the actual um, trunk. But I'm just going to bounce back for a moment and just add a little bit more up in these corners here. Awesome. No way. Asha says they flagged her husband's video once for five seconds and removed the whole video. Yeah, it's crazy. What I really dislike about it, though, is, so for example, the flag that I got on one of my videos from a, a piece of music that I understood was free, like like not copyrighted, um, it, had a, it had a thing of being like, oh, it's copyrighted, and then it had like a link, I guess, you could hear where, like, which song it was, you know, which I violated, I suppose. Mm. But then when I clicked on it to hear the song that I had stolen, it wasn't even the same music. <laughs> like, it was completely different. And I was like, how does that make any sense? Like, I really did not understand. So I don't know if some of it are just like, I don't know if they just have like certain like fake violations or something. I don't know exactly how it works fully. But I was like really 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 annoyed about it um obviously because i was like okay this, like if it's legit you know obviously that makes sense right play back to boys yeah okay yeah it's back to boys song okay i shouldn't be playing unless i pay the money fine um but like come on very very weird 
So I'm just going to do the same thing I did before. So I'm just going to put a little bit of dots. And I might end up going over the branches a bit because I have to, I'm going to have to repaint these lines. And I want the green to be continuous behind my tree. So I need to do that. Yeah, you've had that too, Ebony. Eh, oh yeah. The hackers and spammers. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that's that was really frustrating. It's been very quiet. Um this week there hasn't I haven't seen any and neither had I did last week. But that actually makes me more apprehensive because they were so it was nuts. I was having to block I don't know, I think it was about, like, at one point, it was almost like 30 people. I had to block 30 different accounts in one night because they kept putting links and trying to contact all of you guys, like followers, being like, oh, click here for her video. And I'm like, no, you don't need to click anywhere. Like, you just need to come on to Facebook, and I'm right here. <laughs> like, you don't need to click. And I wasn't sure where all the links went to. I don't know if it was just like a way for them to somehow get viewership or I don't know, or if they were actually asking for, you know, payment. I have no idea, but I just, I really dislike deception in any form. And so that really bothered me because I was just like, well, I don't know what's happening. And then of course I know, obviously there's some people who aren't as technological, like savvy as others. And I didn't want anyone to get screwed in any, any particular way. So it, it really stress, stresses me out every time I see those links pop up. But uh, like I said, it's been very quiet. I haven't had any come up this week or last week. But that just makes me think like, you know, like I'm going to, like next week it's going to go crazy or something, you know, like I just don't trust it. Ugh. So crappy. And because this is such a great way to do it and to keep it free, right? Like then it works out well, but then because it's like this too, it allows, it opens the door for, you know, scammy people. And that's what I dislike very much. But I still think it's more fun to have these live events, right? Like I know I could obviously just record it and then upload things and you have it, but I don't know, something communal about being able to do something together if you want to, if it works in timing that you can actually know that I'm doing it right now with you and you're doing it with me and that feels really cool. So I don't really want to stop that in any capacity because I really get a lot out of it. And it almost like holds me accountable. It's like you're expecting me to be here at a time so then I have to make sure I do it. So it's good too because sometimes, you know, things come up or you feel like, oh, I don't know if I feel like it today or whatever and also with the paintings too even though I, I choose the paintings for you guys to pick from um it's still always a surprise for me to see which one's chosen and sometimes when they're sometimes when some of them are chosen I'm just like uh oh like can I paint this really well it's, I don't know <laughs> so it's like oh, I hope I can do it justice I hope everyone will be happy with it you know so it, it does push me as well which I really like so I don't want scammy people to stop all that great stuff you know and I won't let them do it at least not for now anyways so far we've been able to keep them subside them keep them away I kind of feel like I need to put a little bit on this side too like I feel like it's weird that I don't have anything here oh yeah you know what there is a branch coming here and there is green haha -ha. okay yeah I should put some there that makes sense I'm like this looks weird tree's very lopsided if I don't put any green on this side, I think. And let's just put some here, too. Huzzah! Okay, so let's go and get some yellow now. So I'm just putting, like, the kind of medium green, then I'm getting a bit of yellow, and just, like, dabbing it in a bit, just to give it a bit of a different value and go back to the regular green I'm going on to top my line but I'm going to I'll fix that up afterwards in case you missed that and I just want to make it a little bit darker 
a little bit of a dark kind of a little bit of darkness in here too. Cool. Yeah, I'm happy with that. And then let's let's play with the Oh yes, absolutely. Sorry, I just saw those few more messages there. Yeah, it really does, right? Like when you start putting and all the elements together, it can really pop. Acrylic painting's always like that. So if you want to take a little bit closer, I can bring it up. Let's see, hopefully I don't get any weird glare. So there's all the random branches and the leaves, and I just added more green at the top. I'm going to fix it because the tree always looks kind of weird right now, so I'm going to clean up those lines now. Right? And now all of this just looks so cool in the background. Love it. So pretty. Awesome. Okay, cool. So I'm going to go back now and I want to fix up my lines. I'm going to add a bit more of a branch that's coming up here. And then I want to put in all the details on the trunk because it's going to be so fun. So like here, if we look. So if you look, see all the, all these lovely lines that kind of look twisted and curved and beautiful. We're going to be putting all those in too. So fun. Oh, thank you, Bonnie. Yeah, I'm, I'm really uh, proud of all of this, and I'm so humbled and happy that you guys join me every week. It's crazy. It's wonderful. I love it. Makes me so happy. So, so, so happy. Okay, there I go. That branch goes that way. That does look like it makes a lot of sense there, doesn't it? Okay, so I'm just going to... Clean out these lines that I just created. Don't need them there. There we go. I think this got really thick. I think I need to make this branch a little bit. this. That's a bit better. Okay, cool. So there we go. So now I want to play with all of the curves and twists and lovely patterns on this on this tree. So few things to keep in mind so it's obviously darker on this side here which is away from our light source right so we're gonna see a lot more like white and like lighter lines on this curve and anywhere that this Sun source will have hit the tree and, and, and highlight those types of curves right so that's where we're gonna see the lighter lines we're gonna keep it darker more on the anywhere that's on the opposite side of where the Sun would hit so we're going to keep that, those two things in mind as we're going through, but we're going to have fun doing this. So let me start with, I think I kind of want to start with like a medium tone. So I want to go with like a brown. Let's see if that one works. Okay. And then I want to just play with it. So we want to think about which branches are going to go in front of which others. Okay. So we have this one here. So I just need to...
Turn this one here. Right. This is still very dark, but I'll start to get some of these strokes in here. Definitely need to get it a little darker in some spots and lighter in some spots. Okay, so I have black on here and I want it to be dark here. And here and here. A lot actually. Play with the black. Front. Okay, let's make it dark on this side. Just adding a couple little curves, which will have all the shadows. Trying to keep a pretty dark, a big chunk of the dark on this side. And then it's gonna kind of stroke upwards. It's so hard to see it. I'm looking at the painting and I think my shadow is also not making it very easy for you to see it. Oh, thank you so much, Joe. Yeah, I really appreciate that. That's really sweet. Yeah, you can. Um, let's see. It's again, it's hard because of the lighting I have is really bad. You can kind of see some of those strokes that I'm doing with the black there. Um, I'm just playing with it right now, and I'm going to be adding some lighter colors just to get that momentum, that feeling of it all the way. Okay, so we have that. A lot of branches there. I might want to add some more branches up here. I don't know yet, and I, I noticed too there's a bit of green areas that I don't like the way. It looks there, so I might still touch that up too. That's what we got so far. Thank you, Lori. Hi. Okay, so let's just keep playing with this. Yeah, I really appreciate you saying that. That's really nice, Joe. Um, so I'm just going to put in some like black lines in where I want just to start getting the flow of how I want all the lines to kind of go. All right, and then we're just going to build and play with it as we keep going. Oh, I hate that my lighting is not very nice. And I'm creating it. Uh, I can't even do that or else it's going to pop out of the socket. It's annoying.
here. Okay, so now I want to make it lighter. So I'm going to get a little bit of white into my brown. A little bit lighter going. All right, so I want to put in some lighter streaks. I don't know how light this is going to be, so we're just going to go with it and see what happens. Kind of like a coffee color. I'm sure you know, it's kind of not. So similar to like when I was doing those streaks around and around and around on the background, I'm going to do the same type of idea when I'm adding these lines into my tree. So I'm kind of like going with like some motions here. following some of the black lines that I created just to get these this feels more real is that okay Okay. Yeah. So. <laughs> okay. So that's kind of funny. So last week I used a recording for all the nature sounds in the background and I had it set up and I thought I had it off. I didn't think I'd started it because I had a lot of birds in the background in the trees outside, but I did actually have it turned on. So my bad that this is, this is a bird recording, <laughs> but there are some birds that were chirping earlier and that threw me off. And I remember I, t I told myself, oh, I won't turn it on right yet. I'm going to just have the birds. You can hear them in the background. And then I, I guess I had turned it on just to check to make sure it was working. And I absolutely forgot that it was still on. So yes this is this is a recording it's it's not the birds so my apologies i wasn't trying to i wasn't trying to be sketchy about saying that it was the birds outside they were actually chirping earlier <laughs> i'm sorry about that okay there we go yeah it's on youtube it just has like um it's just like a nature recording and so i'm using that since copyright music is so frustrating to deal with. Okay, so I want to still put some of these strokes here too. Awesome. So I'm going to make it a little bit lighter. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I was like, oh, cool. They're actually chirping outside. They were chirping like all day today, but obviously now it's starting to get dark. So I'm assuming, I guess they sleep at this point. I don't know much about birds, guys. So I'm assuming that's what they're doing. All right, so I'm going to now make it even a little bit lighter, and I'm going to do some highlights where I want, like the sun-kissed kind of spots to live.
Cool. this come up more so when you're doing this you can kind of choose like which branches are in front of which other branches so now I've just made that branch kind of live in front of there and then I'm going to put this branch in front of that one that's when you can kind of play with which branches are on top of which other ones All right and I'll give it more perspective and more depth and honestly doing this is what's really making it all kind of pop and come together and make it look really cool. I love this part of it. Okay. Get some more brown. Darker brown, I should say. Touch it a little bit more. And then I want to go black too. I think I feel pretty good about this. I'm just noticing a few little spots. I'm just going to fill those out as I'm going. Mm -mm -mm. I want it to be a little bit darker, I think, here. And I think I should have some more darker spots here and here. Cool. Oh, absolutely right. I know. I think my cat's not in the room, but he would be going crazy. Okay. So I think. I think I'm done. I think I feel pretty darn happy about this. I hope you do too. I'm going to just pull back the camera. Well, first of all, I'll show you it a bit closer so you can see hopefully some more of the details. Some of you couldn't see. So there is my trunk. So you can see a lot of wispy, almost reminds me of like hair. It's kind of pretty. I like that. That's the tree all the way up, the random lines. We have the green in the background, so all those green little smudges that probably didn't even look that great when you first started putting them in. But now, with all the different shades and colors and the branches on top, it does pop really nice. And then nice branches there, and the sun's shining through, and it's so gorgeous and beautiful. Right? And a few things, if you wanted to, um, if you wanted to do a bit more to it too, of course, you can always touch in a bit too, because obviously, like, some of this is obviously much lighter. So you can go in and make some of these a bit lighter since it is closer to the sun if you want to. I think I'm going to leave it the way it is. I do kind of like the contrast of it, even though if it's not perfectly like, I think I think it should probably be a little bit lighter closer to here, but I, I really like the vibe of it. So I'm going to keep that going. Um, thanks, Bonnie. I really appreciate that. That's fantastic. I, yeah, thank you so much.
And water, yeah. Well, the watercolor is tricky uh, because, yeah, you're right. Like it's uh, not as easy to uh, to get that kind of depth. With acrylic, it definitely lends to that process a lot easier. Um, I'm, I'm really curious. I'm really happy. I'm, I'm excited to see yours. I should say. Um, Awesome. And you're doing a, a bunny for Easter. Oh, that's fantastic. It was funny. I had debated doing an Easter theme for next week, but next week is the exact date of my one year. So I actually have a different kind of theme set up for next week. So it's not Easter themed, if anyone was really excited for that. At least I don't think it is. Maybe I did it the week after. I think I have an Easter one after Easter. So <laughs> hopefully that's okay. <laughs> but um, But yeah. So next week will be uh, my one year of this. So definitely come out and celebrate with me. Um, and I'll have three options for everyone to vote in on, on Saturday. And uh, yeah, thank you all so much for joining. Please take a picture of your creation and put it into the comments. I'm going to put this as a separate post just to show everyone um, the painting that we did today. Um, and definitely I love to see it. So please share with me as well. Thank you so much for joining me. And um, I hope you all have a lovely week and a great weekend. And see you soon. Bye, everyone.